What's up guys, Shane here from Fugulek 3D Printing and today I'm checking out the Eligu Mars Resin 3D Printer. Welcome back guys. So I am so super excited about getting this. I have seen great things about this uh, from Uncle Jesse and a bunch of other guys. Excited just because also it's been sitting here for like three weeks. I left on vacation, it was shipped and I left on vacation, it arrived and it's just been like, just yelling at me from many, many miles away to like, hey, come unbox me. So I'm gonna do that. But before I unbox this, we're gonna go ahead and cut to the future, let you guys see my initial impressions and some prints that I did with it just kind of give you what happened and then I'm going to cut back to this unboxing uh, that's from Uncle Jesse's uh, he's been doing that and I think it's a pretty good idea just to be able to kind of get you guys what you want to know is it any good and then if you want to watch the rest of the unboxing fair enough you can do that so uh, let's go to the future and then you can come back and watch me do this and I guess I should do my due diligence um, on giving you guys a little bit of warning about resin 3d printing I'll probably do this in more videos give you guys a little bit of the warning on doing this uh, it's come up in a big thing on Twitter a lot of youtubers talked about it a lot of people have been talking about it on Twitter and resin 3d printing is not as easy as FDM it's not you throw filament in you press print and you walk away I mean the only real like hazardous material you have for FDM 3d printing is ABS I mean there's a few others but like the most common material is ABS for this pretty much all resins are hazardous they are bad for your skin, they're bad for your lungs, they're bad for your eyes, they're bad for your mouth, they're bad for pretty much everything. So there's a lot of precautions that you should look into. You should always have gloves. I have a box of nitrate gloves down in my resin room. So I actually have an entirely different room just for printing with resin printers. It is separate from my main house here and it is ventilated. I have fan circulating air in the room and I have air circulating I have a fan circulating air outside of the room to ventilate it more. So you need something to cover your hands. The box of night gloves is maybe like $20 or $15 for 100 gloves. You get 50 uses out of them. That's not too bad for that. And again, you get a big box of them. They come with four pair, so that's not bad for this printer. Um, I would invest in, if you don't wear glasses or you don't have safety rated glasses, just a pair, a simple pair of safety glasses would work fine because when you cut resin, like if you're taking off the support and you're cutting through it, it shatters so much more than any FDM 3D printing I've ever had happen with taking off supports or things like that. Taking off the raft around where the support connects to the build plate just explodes. So very careful with that. Um, you're going to want some type of, again, either very well ventilated or a breathing apparatus. I just keep my area ventilated, but again, another way to do it is to have a breathing apparatus, something that's going to have a charcoal filter to filter out all those harmful fumes that you're breathing in. Uh, so we've got hands, we've got eyes, we've got your know, lungs covered, and that's about it. I mean, if you get any resin on you, make sure you wash it off uh, quickly because you don't know what your reaction is going to be. I've gotten it on me. I have not really had a reaction that I've seen yet, but still, I always wear my gloves just to be safe. Even sometimes handling the, I mean, you don't want to want to handle any of the resin prints unless they're fully cured. So make sure you do that and kind of go from there. I'll have other videos on post-processing and things like that, but again, just to kind of go on with this theme of ensuring that people understand the risks in resin printing. It is super fun. You get amazing prints out of it. It really can be great, but you must really truly be careful with this because it is much more harmful or more hazardous to your health than normal FDM 3D printing. So now let's cue on to me doing awesome prints, hopefully with this machine. All right, so I'm back with some prints. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about my experience with the printer so far. Um, obviously it is fully assembled. All you have is the, the acrylic guard basically that to put on it and that's it. The USB stick has been working great. Again, I like seeing that it's branded. So it's a Kingston USB 3.0 uh, USB drive. So that's great. It's sturdy. The one that came with the Photon is really cheap. I like this one a lot better. Leveling was a little more difficult than I thought the Photon was because I don't know why. It just, the ball head, I'm not a big fan of it. I did have it move on me a few times. I had a little bit of trouble getting one of the prints off. So I was pressing a little bit harder on it and the ball head 
just kind of moved, even though I had the, the set screws, I thought pretty tight in there, apparently not. So that is just one thing. And I think even right now it went crooked again, but again, it's just not as sturdy, I think, as what the Photon has, but it is still pretty good. It is nice though that at least it is just the screw mount going directly into the build plate. I did accidentally fill up a little bit too much resin and it did get on there, but that's okay. It's not supposed to come off. There are actually bolts and things on some of the other printers on the actual top of the print bed. This is not the case, so overfilling, really don't need to worry about too much unless it's coming out of the vat, so that is a nice thing. But it is a very, very sturdy printer. I'm noticing like no wobble whatsoever in the Z and the prints absolutely show that. I tried to do a couple different ones that I found interesting online. I've been wanting to print, so I think we'll be able to really look at that. But the leveling is basically, you can leave the vat in. You wanna loosen up the two grub screws on the front and the other one on the side. Have it go all the way, just tell it to auto home basically, and then it will set it up. You want to square off your bed so that it is square inside of the vat. Hold your fingers on it, tighten the two thumb screws as tight as possible, and let it go when you're done. That's, I mean, leveling took probably three minutes, and that was just because I was kind of learning the first time. But after when I had to level it the second time, maybe 30 seconds to a minute it took to re-level the bed and you're off to the races. It's very, very quick and easy. And I did actually have a crooked print that I ended up trashing, uh, but you could definitely see that there was a, uh, an incline in it. And when I took it off, looked, I was like, oh, I didn't do that right. Leveled it again, easy day, but just make sure that it is perfectly level before you start printing. The touchscreen on this, super responsive, very nice, uh, actually way better than the Photon. I do like that a lot more. I am gonna eventually do a a toss up between the two of them because their prices are getting very close. The Photon is still a little bit more, but they're very close. I want to do the exact same models with the exact same resin on the Photons. I'm going to save these for that uh, comparison, but so far I was blown away by again, the quality of a resin printer for 200, what, $250 this is, 249 I think it is right now. It's going to go back up eventually, but right now it's at that price. If it goes down again, that's great but compare this to a $200 Ender 3 or the, the AlphaWise U20 or was it the U30, whatever that one is. Um, it it kind of blows them all out of the water. It does require a ton of extra work though. Gloves, respirator, uh, the filters, the resin itself is more expensive. Uh, there's just so much more that goes into it so it is much more um, involved but the quality coming off of these is quite fantastic. I'm really impressed. Other than that, again, I had several prints without issue except for the one that I did not level properly. Other than that, it printed out just fine. The smell from the resin also is almost like negligible. There's almost no smell from this uncured resin, which was very, very nice to see that. Some of the anti-cubic resins are extremely, um, fragrant isn't the right word, but they're smelly. Uh, I don't know the, the proper scientific term for that, but uh, my wife was actually also really impressed with how these turned out. They looked really, really good. So let me give you a close up of those prints because I think I've talked enough about this. Um, oh, I, people don't, I see people do this, but I don't recommend it. Um, print with this on the printer because I have had a few times where the print suction to the FEP has been so much when it goes and picks it up if you don't have a lot of resin left in there, the resin, I mean, it will like come away from each other and it will flap and you do get some resin splash. And I haven't noticed on this machine, I noticed it on the, the Photon from a few of those prints. So I think I need to change my settings a little bit. I think I have this one like just spot on, but just, I would print with this on so you don't have any splashing of resin outside of the printer. Like this is what this is for to eliminate UV rays going in, but it's also to keep the resin contained inside the printer while printing. So another little safety thing there. Uh, I'm gonna have to do an entire video just on safety with resin printing, but I'm just gonna kind of give the tips and tricks uh, out as I figure them out and as I also find out about them. So yeah, let's look at the prints. So up first, it printed two Rooks together side by side. This is the Eligu Mars Rook and they look phenomenal. I mean, no layer lines whatsoever. This is the default 0.05 millimeter layer height. They cured without problem. They cleaned well. 
but you can see there's the staircase that goes down in there. There's also a, like one of those DNA helixes, whatever that's called, that goes down the middle as well. You have the swirls, the text up top. This is actually shiny, it's so flat up there. The base, again, this sits directly onto the print bed, so it was very easy, a little, a little tougher to get off. But yeah, and again, they both came out absolutely identical, so I was very impressed right off the bat. I went and printed this gem formation. This has been fun for me to print on FDM and resin printers. Uh, so what I have to do is I actually put a, a hole in there and actually you can see there's still a little bit of re uncured resin on there. It kind of leaked out of the hole after I'd had this sitting for a little while. So I do need to clean it. I'm being very careful not to touch it. But again, no support needed. This is printed directly onto the build plate and it looks absolutely fantastic from any angle. Very happy with that. This is hollowed out with a 1.5 millimeter shell. So it's very thick. It's actually very strong. And again, I put the hole in there to try and get some of the resin out, but I didn't wait long enough after doing it. That's because I was trying to hurry up and get this uh, review here done. The next two, I actually printed both of these on the plate together, but this is Nine Tails. Um, I loved the detail in this. I actually saw Uncle Jesse print this with one of his printers. Uh, so, yeah, so I saw Uncle Jesse print this and it looked fantastic. I had to try it out myself. And yes, this absolutely looks just great. So we had a friend over and I was showing them this and they said, well, did you like make this first and like place it on top? I was like, no, 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 this prints just like this. And they were kind of blown away by that. But the details on the, the fur for his tails are just great. The ears are just so tiny in there. You can see each individual toe on his feet. It's just un unbelievable. And like, there's actually like this huge gap in there. as you see that? It, it, yeah, blown me away how well this printed. And then I printed uh, Notre Dame. So uh, most people know now that Notre Dame did almost completely burn down. And thankfully last year, my kids were able to actually go and visit Notre Dame before any of that happened. So I definitely wanted to print this at a super duper fine detail. I want to print a really big one and kind of have it in our house just as a little reminder of what it was. But the building itself is absolutely amazing and I was so happy to be able to see it and be able to print this super high quality model of it was just crazy, absolutely crazy details. Try to get a little bit closer here. You can see all the windows and the slats and the steeple here on it and all of these like columns that all, I mean, they're all bridged. You know how those, there's just all this space between them. You can see the space more back here in those all the little steeples on there. There was this little, see these little flaps right here? I don't know what happened there. It was actually on the model I printed Crooked as well, was that way, I don't know what happened there. But yeah, this was just an absolute fantastic model to print and such a wonder to see in the flesh as well. So this was very cool. So, so far, super impressed with it. Again, the, the ball head I'm not terribly psyched about, but quality wise for this price point fantastic i will have a video in the near future i promise i've said it i think before i will do a video in the near future on actual how i post process or how i slice and then i actually process all of my resin prints everyone does it differently i've gotten a good motion of what works for me i've done probably just about five or six dozen prints now between this and the photon so i will do a video on that in the future if you are looking to get into resin printing at an entry level this very well is an absolute contender to be able to do that for about 250 dollars a little bit more than what a, a cheap fdm printer is you have to take precautions it does require a little extra gear and extra with just extra supplies and whatnot. And you have expendable supplies with this and that you don't have with FDM 3D printing, but it is a great entry point. And I think a lot of people will be getting these in their houses to be able to print tabletop models, or I, I want to do an actual chest, fully full chest set just in resin and kind of paint them and do that. That's something I want to do in eventuality, but this has been great and I'll leave it at that. So how about now you guys go ahead and continue watching the video. You'll see the rest of my unboxing, which kind of go through all what came in the box. I greatly appreciate that. 
So take care and enjoy the rest of the video. So let's get on to unboxing this. A little bit about the printer. Uh, it's the exact same build volume as the Anycubic Photon. So you guys watched my video on that one. Same one. Um, it says that it's using the Chi2 box for their sli with, for slicing. I really like that. If you guys have not tried it out, download it, try it out. It's actually really great. It does a lot of things. Uh, the layer resolution is 0.00125. It's actually not too bad. Printing speed is 36 millimeters per hour. I actually don't know what the um, photon was, but I'm hoping it was somewhere around that. And this box was completely taped. I honestly really don't like that. Uh, I know it kind of keeps preserves the box, but I don't know. It's just a little annoying to me. All right, and once we get in, we have foam. And I have, ooh, I have the gray version. This has come with a black and a gray. That's the same top. We do have the toolbox. We'll look at that in a minute. But let's get this out. Ooh, whoop. there's the, another little pamphlet there. And that looks like that is it. All right, and here it is. Instead of like the photon has that door that swings up, this one just has this acrylic casing over it bag and we've got some foam cut pen pieces here oh okay here's our build platform and we have a single z on a kind of linear rare looking system but it's actually pretty sharp looking got the usb port in the back which uh i really wish they start putting those on the front i don't know just because you got to reach behind it a little pet peeve but that's looking pretty sharp get this off maybe ah no all right i guess that's not going to cooperate right now so let's put this back on there it is i like it what came in the toolbox let's see here all right so the toolbox we have the power supply and the cable for that they all use these power bricks they don't integrate the power supplies into them at least that i've seen yet there might be some out there that do but the two that i have so far use power bricks uh, they give you have some gloves, a little measuring cup for some reason. Uh, here we have a non-ball head uh, hex wrench. Ball head would be nice. Here's the scraper. This is really nice. It's the exact same scraper as any cubic uses. I like this a lot. It, um, it's very safe to use, which is a great thing. Um, but also it actually does a really, really good job. I actually nicked my any cubic one, so I'm happy to have this one. Uh, we have a pair of flush cutters, very nice. It's not too bad. Here we have the Kingst uh, Kingston, oh okay. So this is a branded USB 3, eight gig Kingston thumb drive. That is much better than the Anycubic because that came with an unbranded one that a lot of people said failed. So I'm hoping that since this one is actually a known brand, maybe this one will do a little bit better. Uh, we've got probably about 10 or a dozen of the paint filter. So this is what you use to put your, whatever resin you have left over in your vat, you're gonna pour that into this and this drips down into your bottle. That way you don't have any little particulates or anything in there and you have clean resin for your next print. Those are really good to have. Uh, so Allen wrenches and I'm guessing some extra screws. These Allen wrenches are ball head uh, and several. So they give you three uh, little masks. These honestly don't do anything uh, for the safety of a resin 3D printer. So they really don't. Um, they doesn't really block out any of the, the um, odors that you're gonna be smelling. You'd actually need an actual active or a, by the pathway, the, the charcoal filters to be able to filter any of that out. So uh, it's nice to have them, I guess, but uh, they're really, really useless. So thank you guys for watching the unboxing. It, kind of quick and easy, this is what comes in it. Hope you guys enjoyed what uh, I did earlier, which was hopefully giving you an idea of how it prints and my you know, first experiences, the first couple days of me using this printer. I was gonna say thank you guys. If you made it all the way to the end here, uh, you're awesome for watching that full unboxing. Again, something just little and small, but it makes uh, it means everything that you guys actually watch the whole video through. Uh, so the, the normal deal at the end here, if you guys wanna keep in tune with what's going on, make sure you hit that big subscribe button down there. Check out some other content over here. Wait, is it gonna be, it should be over there over there. I'll become a patron if you guys want to help me out. Uh, there's some one-time links. You can buy this with the links down in the below. They are filler links. So anything you guys buy with the link for this or any other ones down there, uh, all that comes back here to help me out the channel. And I appreciate that. Help me build and buy things for my channel. 
Thanks for tuning in, guys. Till next time, happy printing.